From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the estate of Jose de Medrios, and the Mass is offered in memory of Jose, Maria, and Elizabeth de Medrios. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. And so we begin as we should always begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. We gather this day knowing that we, we are here in the presence of a God, a God who accompanies us, a God who is present to us, a God who gifts us so much. We want to acknowledge at times that we have been ungrateful and ask forgiveness of God and of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Enable us, we pray, Almighty God, to proclaim the power of the risen Lord, that we who have received the pledge of his gift may come to possess all he gives when it is fully revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not any person among them for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. The words of the Lord.
And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, and yet you do not receive our testimony. If I've told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Nicodemus is a leader who is extremely sure of himself, secure in his power, and he really wants to be sure about Jesus and his teaching. We should recall his conversation with Jesus about entering, about being born again, about the kingdom of God, or being born from above, about entering your mother's womb for a second time, about water and spirit and the wind blowing where it chooses. You know, I can only imagine that after listening to Jesus, Nicodemus' head and mind had to be reeling. But Jesus tells Nicodemus that if we believe and we trust in him, we will have eternal life. It will be through our belief and trust in the testimony that Jesus has given regarding God and God's plan of salvation. Jesus reveals that he is the one who has come to fulfill the promised word of God. It is he who will give us this new life in the Spirit. And Jesus is really telling Nicodemus that we are called to gradually let go of our old ways, certitudes and, and securities, to die to self-centered needs in order to live by the Spirit and become men and women of mercy and compassion. Like Nicodemus, Despite all of our accumulated experience and knowledge, we too have to be born again and again from above. We don't deny our knowledge or our experience, but in faith, we trust that the source of new life and of new birth comes from the spirit of the risen Christ. It's much more mysterious than changes which we can observe because it takes place in the innermost depths of our being. The believer who is led by the Spirit gradually discovers changes in one's actions and motivations and those of others. One feels at ease with God, without fear, and begins to realize that there is someone who lives within, who is orienting our lives, and yet so often it's so very difficult to articulate that mysterious indwelling. Jean Vanier observes as we enter into relationship with Jesus and follow him, we receive the life that is in Jesus. We begin, to, we begin to see people as Jesus sees them. We begin to love them as Jesus loves them, and to see and love ourselves as Jesus sees and loves us. Life and trust bring us to dwell in Jesus and Jesus in us, and as they grow and deepen, they lead us into a transformation in God. You know, I can't help but recall that Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, but after the death of Jesus, it was the same Nicodemus who had the courage to accompany Joseph of Arimathea in the daylight to give Jesus a dignified burial. Something happened. Jesus came to save us from all those fears that close us up in ourselves. The conversation with Jesus was a challenge 
for him to let go and let God, to live according to the Spirit. We know that Nicodemus was a religious person who, like many of us, didn't need any more instruction in religion, but above all needed to let go and undergo a change in himself. Many times we've had to recognize our own powerlessness to pass through the barriers and the boundaries which block us from being authentic disciples of Jesus. Yes, we have to be born again and to be born from above, and the source of the new birth has to come from the spirit of the risen Christ. It's more mysterious than changes which we can observe because it takes place, as I said, in the innermost depth of our being. We can notice changes in our friends. We see it in the reading today from the Acts of the Apostles. In today's reading, we read and hear about their concern, their testimony, the change that happened in their lives. And there was no need or no need among those who were there. However, as believers led by the Spirit, we gradually discover the changes in our own actions and motivations and those of others. One feels at ease with God, without fear, and begins to realize that there is someone who lives within, who continues to orient our life. We have to ask ourselves what it really means to be born again at many levels. The questioning reaches into the very core of our being, and I'm sure that happened in the case of Nicodemus. We come back to that point of acknowledging our own powerlessness by ourselves and unaided to pass through the barriers which block us. Our friends in the 12-step programs identify the problem, at least the, the way that some of them have expressed it to me, the, father, the biggest problem I have is my ego. And for them, they understand the word ego is easing God out. We experience the life of the spirits if we let go and let God act freely in us. We know that the love of God is fundamentally expressed in sending Jesus among us. His presence in the world is the measure of God's love for us. Every gesture, every word of Jesus manifests the friendship of God and the mercy of God. Christian faith means believing in the one who made that concrete gesture of love, who died on the cross for us. God sent his son, and solidarity is established, which gives meaning to all human history. By our own deeds and attitudes, we are called to express our faith in a God who manifests love through deeds. As Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, in the shadow of the empty tomb, with the resurrection behind him, Jesus leaves the remembering, the blessing, and the sharing of life for us to do. Please join with me as we pray. We pray this day for the many people who join us via television, in particular the people who have asked that we remember their intentions in this celebration of the Eucharist. And so for all of them and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. We pray in a very special way for refugees, people who live in incredible insecurity, struggling to live the with the dignity that is their right. We pray that they will be protected and be given the security that they need. And so for refugees, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that each one of us can be an agent of peace, that peace will be in our hearts, in our homes, and in our communities that we can reach out to others as peacemakers. And for that grace for each and every one of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all of this we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed 
And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ, and therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, grant to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we pray just as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Would those of you at home join with me now in saying the morning offering? O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, sufferings of this day in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I offer them for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, the salvation of souls, reparation for sin, the reunion of all Christians. I offer them for the intentions of our bishops and of all apostles of prayer, and in particular for those recommended by our Holy Father this month. Amen. And let, let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen. Have a good day. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Our prayer book cost $10. If you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and send it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Suite 100, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C, 2M6. Thank you.